with a a person who couldn't have any children. So his Rebbe was the Yiddakadosh. Was it the Sea of Berlin or the Yiddakadosh? Susan, do you remember the story? He went to the Rebbe and... This is the one where he said, sell all your possessions and go to Leipzig to the fair. <laughs> oh, yes. But I don't remember the story. I think it was the Sea of That's Lublin. Rivka, yes. This is just to show you the Sea of Lublin, his division that he had. So he goes to the Sea of Lublin. You can sit down and... He goes to the Sea of Lublin and he says... I've been married many years, I can't have children. Can you give me a blessing that I should have children? And the seal Lund says, would you be willing to sell just about everything that you have? He says, let me ask my wife. He gets permission. The Rebbe says, I want you to go to the fair in Leipzig and stay there and wait there and you'll know from there what you have to do. Because the truth is, this man had been engaged to a girl, and the girl's parents, who had a lot of money, were going to pay for a big dowry, lost their money, and he decided to break the engagement because, after all, nice they couldn't keep... <laughs> well, that was the way it was for many people those days. Marriage was a business arrangement to some Not degree. Now. Only sometimes today. <laughs> and um, he had broken the engagement, and he never really made shalom with her. So he basically had to like make up with her so that he could go on with his life. He goes to the fair in Leipzig and he's, can't, he doesn't find her. And it's the last day of the fair. After the fair, everybody leaves. And it's raining, so he goes under an awning. You know how it is when it's raining in the city, you find an awning, you go under it, you wait for the, the heavy rain to subside. And a very well-dressed woman steps in under the awning and he steps away from her to make give her space. She says, every time I get near you, <laughs> you, you go away, you run away. And he looks up, he wasn't looking at her face, and it's his ex-fiance. And his mom is crying because he knows this is his one chance to have a child is to make up with her. That's what the Rebbe, that's his chance. So, <clears throat> He starts crying, he pours out his heart, he says, I feel bad about what I did. But you know what, it's, it's so many years later, and I'm married and I'm childless for 10 years, whatever, a tremendous amount of years. And the only way I could have a child is if you give me a blessing that everything is okay. She says, you know what, it's not necessarily okay, but I'll tell you what, I'll make it okay if you're, if you're agreeable. He says, I have a brother who has a child that he needs to marry, but he doesn't have the money. He needs marry to marry off. He needs 10,000 rubles. If, and he's mamish waiting in a couple of days to do the wedding, and he doesn't know what to do. If you can go right now, take the, you know, get the best horse and run there, and mamish in two days go there and give him 10,000 rubles, whatever it is, a large amount of money, then I will believe with my complete heart, I'll forgive you. He says, you know what? It's a deal. He gets the horse, he runs, two days, he comes in, he looks like a dirty, smelly person who's riding for two days straight. Who's money? His money or her money? His own money. His own money. He goes to this thing, he and he knocks on the door, and the guy answers the door, and he sees this man looking like a complete wreck, and he says, who are you? What are you doing here? He says, you're, you are, whatever, you're the, the brother of? Rifkula. Rifkula. Who was my, who I was engaged to, who I was engaged to, right? He says, yeah, what are you doing here? He says, I came because Rifkula sent me to come give you 10,000 rubles for your own daughter's wedding. His face turns white. He says, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. He says, Rifkula, you broke her heart. And after you broke her heart, she sank into deep depression and died just a little, a uh, little bit after, a few months 18 after, years 18, 18, 18 years, 18, 18 years before. earlier. Yeah. So, Mama, she realized that she had come down from another world. 
to forgive him. So that's the story of the seer of the blood. And the Rebbe says that if you have a tikkun with a loved one, they are obligated to come, even from the other side. I don't know how you say it. Yeah, wow. What did you say? So the Rebbe says that if you have a fixing to do with a loved one, even if they're in another world, they'll come down. You're obligated to, get, they're to, obligated to come if down. You're really looking for them if you really to mamish want to fix it, to come down and fix it. So this is a story of, of this, you know, the you vision. You have to fit into my good ear. Okay, the vision. <laughs> did he get the show? Yes, I'm sure he did. That goes without saying. <laughs> if you can make somebody come back from, you know, from another world, they can also they can also have a child. So Herb Sim, so Herb Simcha Bunim, everybody knows, or maybe you don't know, Herb Simcha Bunim was actually a pharmacist. So some people didn't like the fact that a pharmacist, he had like an education, a, a, a secular education to become a pharmacist. Some people didn't, and he was a businessman. And he wore short coats. So people couldn't believe that a sophisticated person could be a rebbe. It seemed like an oxymoron, like if you're, if you're with it, you can't be in this out of it world. And he would say it's just the opposite. He says the other rebbe's for their whole life, they sat in this hall of study and they never saw what it really is to be in the world, to work in the world, and to see the challenges that people are facing every day. Oh, that's so, that's why I went, so, like, coming to the cafe over here. I went by mistake there. Sure, I went too. That took me 10 minutes to get <laughs> out of there. That's why I wear short coats. That's why I wear short coats. That's why you wear short coats. Okay. Well, we said so, there, but it was very low. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so that was that was Reb Simcha Bunim. And Reb Simcha Bunim, like I said, when he passed away, so his two biggest Talmidim were the Reb Menachem Mendel of Kutz and Reb Yitzchak Varka. And, Ibi, and Shlomo liked to say that even though they were the best friends, the ways of serving God couldn't be anything more different because in in Kutz, the truth was the most important thing. And in Varka, loving people was the most important thing. So after Yitzhak Varka passed away, this is another story Shlomo told, the sons of, Ab, the sons of Yitzhak Varka went to Reb Menachem Mendel of Kutsk. And Reb Menachem Mendel of Kutsk said, so did you see your father? In other words, these people were on such a level that even after somebody had passed away, they still had communication with them. They said, no, but did you see our father? He said, yes. So let me tell you the story. I went up into Shemayim, and I asked, where's my good friend, Rabbi Yitzhak Varka? And every place I went to, they said he was here, but he left. And I went from palace to palace. I went from space to space in heaven, heavenly space. And again, every place I went to, he was already there, but he had left. And finally I said, well, you know, where, where, do, where do I go? And I went down this long, long way. They sent me down this, like, deep, deep, dark, dark forest. And at the end of the forest, I come out on the other side, and there's this big ocean. And I never saw anything like that. The ocean looked like it was crying. I didn't know what, what it was. And there I saw my friend, Abyusak Varka. He was waiting, leaning over, looking at the tears. And I said, what is this? What is this ocean? I don't recognize it. And Abyusak, my good friend Abyusak said, you don't recognize it? This is an ocean of tears. The tears of all of Israel. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm waiting here by the ocean of tears till God comes and wipes away every